Hi, I'm Dennis Wilson. At Delta Dental of New Jersey, we're committed to educating the public about the importance of good oral health and its role in our overall health and well-being. That's why we're proud to support the important health care programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Quality Oral Care, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Delta Dental of New Jersey. Everyone deserves a healthy smile. Partners for Health Foundation, partnering to make our communities healthier, better places to live. ADP, a comprehensive provider of human resources technology and services. The Fidelco Group, Suez, ready for the resource revolution. Johnson & Johnson. And by Cone Resnick, Accounting, Tax, and Advisory, where forward thinking creates results. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. What are the keys to quality oral care? Here in the studio to talk about this very important but often ignored question. We have four experts. First, we have our good friend, Dr. Nicole McGrath. I should say, everyone is a good friend here in the studio. She's the founder and chief executive officer of Kinder Smile Foundation. Uh, Dr. Sam Joaquim, chief dental officer of Zufall Health. Dr. Mario Ramos is assistant director of the Children's Dental Center at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Newark, New Jersey. And Dr. Mary Voitis, director of the dental residency at Hackensack University, Medical Center, Mountainside, my neighborhood hospital. I want to thank all of you for joining us. You know, this whole question of oral health, and there'll be information put up throughout this program. Is it, doctor, the question of quality oral care, or is it access to quality oral care, and is there a difference? I think it's access uh, to quality oral health for whom? care. When you're dealing with the targeted population, low-income, underserved communities, there's a huge problem with access uh, to oral quality oral health care here nationally and more specifically in the state of New Jersey. Mostly children. Um, I would say mostly children, but we do have adults too that there's a huge problem with access as well. Let's talk about the fact that children. Let's stay on children first. We'll talk about seniors in a second. But children, who are these children? And what are the barriers and obstacles they're facing? That's a great question. Um, and you know Newark most, particularly well. Yeah. Um, as a pediatric dentist, um, we deal with this every day. Um, you know, these children are, are, are your normal children in inner cities, particularly areas like Patterson, Newark, Camden, where, where accessing oral health care is a very difficult challenge. These children's parents have many obstacles to overcome on a daily basis. So dental care becomes less of a priority. Um, when it's time to, to locate care, uh, that becomes a hurdle as well. Um, cost of, of care, providers who are willing to see these children, um, and the needs that they have may be beyond the local dentist's needs. So it's difficult for these parents to navigate the system uh, mm -hmm. of access. So these are the kids in the inner city. These are the kids you see every day on the street. These are the kids that are missing about 51, hour, 51 million hours of school hours a year nationally uh, because of dental problems. What kind so, of issues are children facing? who don't get the dental care, the oral health care they need. Let's talk about that. I, I saw a child yesterday, eight years old, came in with a swollen face, had never been to the dentist. Swollen face. Face, swollen face. from a tooth abscess. Had <sighs> never been to the dentist. Has insurance. We're there. We see emergencies every day. The mom did not bring him yes. until he was sent home from school with a swollen face and couldn't function. Absolutely. Is this in the community I was talking about? Yeah, in the community absolutely. I know well? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the sur area surrounding Mountainside, the Montclair, uh, right. you know, West Orange, Newark. We, we see patients from a wide variety. It's, it's not uncommon. What it's happens? Uncommon. First of all, how does that happen? Um, uh, education. I think education of parents in terms of the need for dental care, prevention, um, making sure that the children get fluoride vitamins. This child is eight, has never had a fluoride vitamin. That should have been started at a few months of age. Why well, do you think that didn't happen? You're, you're saying purely because a parent doesn't know that that is important, that that's why that doesn't happen? That's a part of it. And then I think what I see is that diet feeds in. When I see young children who come in with mouths full of caries, what do they have? They have juice in their bottles. 
they drink soda, they eat candy, and, and it just goes on and on. And it's always, it's not the mom's fault, it's the dad's fault, it's the grandparents' fault. They give it mm -hmm. when he goes to an office, somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, there, and there are long-term ramifications. People think, oh, it's a problem with your teeth. But let's talk some of the longer-term, complicated, significant medical and health ramifications dealing with oral health. Right, so the bacteria from uh, the mouth can travel throughout your body. It could cause, uh, contribute to heart disease and other um, medical conditions as well. So what we try to do, I think, you know, I would agree that um, education is a big part of what we're trying to do and focusing parents and patients on the risk factors. So just like you think of cholesterol and high blood pressure contributing to, you know, um, strokes and uh, heart attacks, we want pa patients to think about the risk factors. Such that as? Are, so bacteria is a, is, a, is a big one. So the amount of bacteria in your mouth, uh, are you cleaning it on a regular basis, removing the bacteria? Um, how, how would one know? How would one? How would a parent and or a child know? Well, I think they're quote unquote removing the bacteria. That's, that's basically brushing and flossing, disrupting the bacteria that's how in often? your mouth. That daily basis would be, would be uh, ideal because after, you know, after the bacteria has been there for a day, it's gonna grow and get stronger. So the longer you leave it unchecked, the more harmful it becomes. And it could, again, travel throughout your body and uh, cause issues in other areas um, of your body. So, um, and of, of course, the longer it stays there, it can do more damage, damage the bone. Uh, around the teeth, so bacteria is a big thing. The other major thing was mentioned as well as diet. So how often are you um, eating sugar? How often are you um, uh, drinking uh, mm. sugar drinks? People don't realize how much we're consuming sugar through uh, drinks, and that also relates to medical conditions, diabetes, and um, uh, you know, other health uh, conditions. Let's clarify, it's, it's not just urban, poorer, <laughs> children with serious socioeconomic challenges. It's other children, it's Absolutely. other people. Talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely, I believe that it's lack of education. Um, just piggy, piggybacking on what uh, Dr. Voida said, about a month ago, um, a uh, nurse from one of the uh, Montclair schools uh, called us, Kinder Smile. Uh, she oh, had what a, your, describe your organization. Oh, Kinder Smile. It's a 501c3 nonprofit organization uh, that uh, increases oral care access and oral care education for low income children. And we do that by partnering with schools and community organizations. Right. And so uh, this school nurse called about a month ago, and she was in, de she was in desperate need. She had a 10 year old girl who came to her office every single day for about two weeks. This 10-year-old girl was in pain. She could not focus in school. This is in Montclair. So yes, I agree, it's in the inner cities and the underserved communities, but it's also all over. I mean, I raised my children in Montclair, and so uh, we, um, at that time, I immediately uh, referred her over to Dr. Voitis, uh, and we partnered together to, to help the children uh, with access to care. So uh, long story short, she ended up at uh, Rutgers uh, Dental School for long-term care. Uh, but um, yes. She needed help. She needed help. What would have happened if, I hate to ask it this way, yeah. but people need to understand, if this, how old was she again? She was 10 years old. Doesn't get help over an extended, first of all, that's a long period of that's, time already. That's a long period. But say it's months. What could potentially happen here? Well, in 2000, in 2007, uh, Diamante Driver, a 12-year-old boy from Prince George's, Maryland, died from a tooth abscess, a brain infection due to a tooth abscess. So there you go, systemically. The boy died? Died, mm -hmm. absolutely, 12 What's the years correlation? old. correlation? Infection, the bacteria spread. A lot of parents think that it's a localized infection, but the bacteria spreads mm -hmm. throughout the, the bloodstream. So absolutely, it's deadly. It can be deadly. The, the, the reimbursement, the way the government reimburses uh, for Medicaid, and Medicaid is the government program, the federal program, that is in place to help those who do not have the means to pay for health care, together with the Affordable Care Act, put it all together. Reimbursement hmm. for the care we're talking about. You raise your eyebrows. It, it's very low, so there are very few dentists who are practicing in the community who will accept Medicaid because they can't financially keep their offices open and see that population. So what's the so, incentive to do what is necessary? 
so I train residents. Um, so I have five residents who are with me who are general dentists, and they come to learn about pediatric dentistry as well as teenagers, adults, and geriatrics. And hopefully they will bring some of those skills into the community. Um, and and we happen to be in some centers where, um, where we see the Medicaid population, and we welcome right. that population. We don't turn them away. Talk about it. Um, it, it, you know, it's a big issue to grab your hands around. Um, certainly reimbursement is an issue. Um, also, being able to, there are children who have Medicaid who don't access it. So it's a, it's a matter when you say that, we throw that word around education. Um, what's important to know is that um, we have efforts like the Academy of Pediatric Dentistry where we, we do our uh, dental home concept. And we want children in New Jersey and all through the nation to see the dentist on their first birthday. That's when we want to see children. And that's a supported why? by, the, and I'll tell you why. We want them to form this connection, this dental home. Just like they have a medical home, they need a dental home. And so we have educated our dentists, our pediatric dentists, to be able to see a child at age one, to make that connection, not just for the child, but for the parent. For the parent to have somewhere to go when they have a problem, when they have a question, when they have a trauma. Um, so we want that to start right away. And we want that connection to start at one. Um, and, and you know, every time I say that, people still raise their eyebrows. We've been talking about this for more than 10 years. It's important and and that's everywhere that's not just in inner cities in poor communities this is everywhere mm -hmm. so once we parents understand that dental care is part of overall health uh, children who, who have dental problems can't can't thrive can't grow properly can have digestive issues certainly can have problems learning and focusing uh, so it is part of our overall health unfortunately it's been separate too long let's uh, let's move uh, and by the way boys and girls clubs doing a lot of work in this area real quick describe it yes uh, we have a dental center at the Newark boys and girls club we're also a nonprofit 501 right. uh, c3 um, and and we're one of only one certainly the only one in New Jersey but one of only a few in the nation where we have a dental clinic within the boys and girls club we also now have a vision center Center where children get eye exams and free glasses if they need it. And now we also have behavioral health. And it's free to members. All free to members. We don't, there's no payment. We just schedule the children and we provide the free dental care that they need. Now, Dr. McKeem, let's move it out to the rural areas that you know well. Right, right. So and your organization serves? We're a federally qualified health center. We're a nonprofit as well. We have nine sites throughout. Um, and you serve uh, it, rural areas as well. We Describe serve what's going on there. Rural areas, uh, Medicaid and uninsured uh, mostly, and we have a lot of pockets of needs throughout, sure. uh, throughout um, you know, um, our service area. And um, Dr. Ramos is right. About 42% of children who do have Medicaid don't access um, uh, dental services. So even though they have insurance, they don't access dental care. So part of our challenge is bringing uh, the care to them in those How many pockets. It? So one of the things that we were happy to have, uh, thanks to Partners for Health and Delta Dental Support, uh, we're going to have a mobile dental van that will a go. A mobile dental van. Yeah, so so we're you gonna, go out and do what? We're, we're going to go <laughs> out into the community, into uh, different um, uh, areas in the community and provide dental services. There's two dental rooms on the van to do treatment, um, you know, fillings, extractions. We've been going out for a while uh, doing preventive services, uh, but we're very excited to have an actual dental van with two chairs to be able to uh, go out. It makes a do. difference when you actually go to where people are. It does, because transportation is a big barrier for, um, mm -hmm. for patients, so cost is a big barrier. And also, let me think about this, because you deal, you deal with some seniors as well. I, I deal all and, ages. And, yeah. and, but let me deal with the senior population that, that all of you know, but I'm going to press this a little bit. But the senior population, them getting to, access is always a difficult issue. Yeah. Transportation is always so. a difficult issue, particularly in New Jersey. Never easy to get around. Mm. But for seniors, getting to seniors, important? Absolutely. Talk about Absolutely. It. Well, one, seniors think when they get Medicare, they get dental services, and they don't. So that's the misconception. Right. So it, it's the same way they had before. They had no dental insurance. Um, Patients need to come to the hospital. They come for their medical care. We offer them dental services there. We provide the full range of services. We offer them a discount if they come, if they're paying cash and have no insurance, which most of the seniors don't. So we offer them a discount. We provide emergency services. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of decay and poor hygiene, especially as people get older. They have physical disabilities, so they can't brush, they can't floss. We have, uh, I have two hygienists who work with me uh, who see patients every day, providing the cleaning and services and education to the mm. patients. We put them on fluoride rinses. We give them prescriptions for fluoride um, 
uh, toothpaste, things like that, so to help some in some of the prevention I, I'm areas. I'm curious about something. Um, e each one of you in your own way, a nonprofit, a nonprofit, a nonprofit, and, and and the hospital organization you're connected with is in fact a not for profit. No, it's a for profit. A for profit mm -hmm. organization. Um, but what I'm curious about is, uh, and by the way, many hospitals are non profits, so yeah. that being said, um, and the foundation community is involved. Right. So here's what I'm curious about from a public policy point of view health care. Um, how is it that oral health? And all the issues you raise connected to oral health, all the other diseases, all the other uh, health problems associated with that have long-term serious ramifications for people's health and also from an economic point of view, serious problems. How come this is not some sort of serious public policy yeah. issue on the part of the state and the federal government? And have I missed the public debate on this? Well. It's a huge problem. Uh, currently, we don't have a, a dental director, a state dental director, mandate in policies to uh, improve oral care access. Is it embedded um, within the Department of Health? Uh, I think so. I know. think so. <laughs> and you're the experts in the area. Yeah. <laughs> well, you Go know. Ahead. And um, it, it is a huge problem. It, it really is a huge should problem. Should it be, should there be someone designated on the state government level? heading up oral health. Absolutely. 100%. And why do you think there isn't, given, given this conversation with four people who live it every day, who have no particular political or ideological point of view, are only interested in the health of those you serve? Yeah. If I can answer, there was a bill just introduced uh, that would create that office, um, but it was not signed uh, by our governor. Mm -hmm. um, so What's the argument against it? That I don't is it know, the economics? Steve. I think uh, it is funding. It's, funding. it's funding. It's funding. It's funding. It's funding. It's not a priority. For the office of it? Yes, for this funding position. The office. Funding, funding the position. Funding the office. The position. The position. Of dental director. Absolutely. Well, then, but what would a dental, for argument's sake, mm -hmm. what would a dental director, what could a dental director do, an office of the dental director in the state of New Jersey? Hypothetically, we'll cover this on uh, our producers who, who are here, deal with our other series called Capital Report, know that we're going to follow up on that end as well and try to understand this. Um, what could a, a statewide office of dental director do with respect to the issues we're talking about right now? What could he or she do? Realistically. Man, man, policies. Uh, implement, yeah. Im implement policies. For instance, I know I've worked um, uh, with the several FQHCs. Federally um, qualified federally health, qualified centers. Health, centers. health centers. And for instance, if, if a mother walks in with a two-year-old, uh, that dentist, a dentist at an FQHC, can say, look, I'm not ready to see that two-year-old bring that child back when he or she is seven or eight. Um, and I think that's wrong. It should not be. And so you're saying government policy should state what? I think government, government policy should, should have, should state that targeted populations, low-income, underserved uh, communities and families, mm. they, they should be seen at all FQHCs at a certain age. Well, I what about seniors? You're, you're not pop you're, well, I don't well, want to get into I'm it too much, but, but why should seniors be different? Well, and those uh, who are, are no, homeless me, and veterans and others, I mean. Let me tell you, the teenagers I see where we're extracting <laughs> yeah. We haven't even talked about that. But yeah. 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 Young That's adults. Right extracting teeth because they are decayed beyond repair. Okay, so an 18-year-old comes in, he or she has, what, what have you seen, what kind of oral health issues? Severe decay, severe decay. I mean, the, and what do teenagers do? They drink soda, they drink sports drinks. It's all acid and sugar on the teeth. And he or she's about to go them. off to college. Right. And what happens? Right. Then they have Could a Could it impact his Absolutely. or her ability to be successful? Absolutely. Absolutely. Higher education? It starts Absolutely. at the beginning with young children and it continues through teenage years. If you look um, at the prison rates, uh, you know, well, when prison, prison rates. Prison. What does well, that have to, well, now you're that, really complicating well, things. When you're, the majority of the, the um, people that are incarcerated, most of their teeth have been extracted. I mean, it's, it's a, a, a systemic problem. It starts infancy and it just progresses. It's, it's a cycle that it's, it's just okay. unbelievable. If I can add one thing, Steve, and I don't want to leave this topic go, go with the dental director. 
Um, I think we I'll need come back to a um, cap report, I promise, but go ahead. Okay. I think what's important Last is that comment. someone needs someone needs to, to put all the parts together. Okay, they need to see what, what are the decay rates in New Jersey, what are citizens suffering from? Um, what what are what is the dental community doing about it? What is the New Jersey Dental Association doing? What are the dentist members? What are what are the nonprofits doing? We need someone to take the helm to be able to provide the services that our it's not citizens like there need. Organizations out there, they're doing out there. It, we're, we're, we're there's no coordination. Okay. Yeah. Com final comment on that. I was just going to say that we actually encourage um, uh, our children to come in by age one. So uh, our FQHC, we see children uh, by age one, and we, we have uh, pediatric dentists with us that work with us. Okay. And uh, with regards to the policy, I mean, there's a lot that can be done that would significantly improve New Jerseyans' oral health. One is uh, a water fluoridation. That's something that can be done relatively inexpensively and would have a significant impact impact. Is on Is there patients. a debate on this? There is. Uh, there, there is, is a debate, debate. Big debate. unfortunately. Yeah. What's the debate? You have a, a very strong anti-fluoridation community. It sure is. And yeah. so that whenever, unfortunately, the way that our laws in the state are is that if you're going to add fluoride, it needs to be done um, water company by water company, town by town. Okay, we'll do so, that on cap report. Yes. Is the Pandora's yeah. box open yes. again here on yeah. Caucus? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, uh, it's, it's, is it, hold on, let's do this because uh, while Caucus tries not to do public policy, it's impossible right. not right. to have not it to. creep into it because it's relevant. But let me ask you this in the time we have left. Can we give some tangible, practical advice to parents watching right now? Because I know we talked about seniors, we talked about teens, we talked about a whole range of populations. But for parents watching right now, can we give some practical, I mean, I know as, as, a, as a parent of, of four kids, but three of them who are 13 and under, my wife and I are talking all the time and asking, did you brush your teeth, did you brush your teeth? Okay. Flossing, forget it, I and mean, that's a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some practical things that we need to do to help our children have the best oral health? First, I would say the oral health, your oral cavity is the gateway to total health. Everything starts there. Um, I instruct or tell uh, my patients and my parents to sit with your child. Wa have them watch you. Kids learn what they live. Have them watch you brush and floss and be meticulous about it. They're going to follow in your steps and your acts. So just take out the time to do that and really just make sure that they visit the dentist on a regular basis. I mean, Don't as, skip basic, those appointments. as right. basic as it sounds, that can prevent so okay. much. Someone else, yes. So I mean, I would definitely um, encourage them to brush and floss, but there's other things they could do if they don't want to brush and floss. Use a fluoride rinse, um, especially for children eight and above that, you know, they could do a that. A fluoride rinse. Right, Eight over the counter um, uh, fluoride rinse. There's, um, you know, I, I think even there's some that you could use at age six for um, like a slightly lower concentrations. Having a water bottle, carrying a water bottle. How around. does that help? Because basically the bacteria in the mouth, whenever you uh, consume a substrate that the bacteria could act on, mainly sugar, it produces acid. And the acid is basically what causes dental decay. And we need to cut back severely on the amount of soda we are allowing our children to drink, correct? Absolutely. I, I think the, the nuggets here are children need to brush two times a day for two minutes each time twice a day. They need to be supervised. We did a study where we saw, we asked parents, do your children brush? They say, they did brush twice a day. Then we asked them, did you watch them brush? And the answer is no. I don't watch. Right. You got to watch. So you got to supervise. It's not that we don't trust them. It's that they don't know what they don't know. Right. How do they know what two minutes is? Right. Timers. Timers. There's so much on the market they oh, can wow. use. There's iPhones. We have two minute videos that they can brush to. They can sing a song with a radio. Right. There's like so this. many things. So that, that two minutes twice a day, supervise them. That's important. Parents need to be on top of this. And then, of course, the age one visit. We've got to get in touch age with dental street. What do you got? You. I got it should be water and milk for children. There should not be juice or soda or any of that. And there's no reason for children to be drinking juice. They can there is drink. no reason for children to be drinking juice. No. 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 The Academy of Pediatrics says that children should have, if anything, one small juice box a, a day. Children get in their lunch boxes. They have it with dinner. They have it with snacks. They're bathing their teeth. I would say water and milk. If we could stop that and stop the soda and sports drinks, we would sports go Sports drinks? <laughs> Absolutely. How did that get into this in the last it's, minute of the show? It's, <laughs> it's sugar in acid. How you get your energy. Yeah. yeah. It's sugar. <laughs> this is not good. Sports drinks not good? I, I always tell my parent, uh, my parents, dilute. If you if if you absolutely have to give them juice, you've got to dilute it. You've got to put water Slowly in there. Sugar. Absolutely. Yeah. Water bottles. Absolutely. Water bottles. Water bottles. Water, bottles. water, bottles. water, water bottles. is the key. 
water bottle. So whatever it is, dilute it. Dilute it. That's the safest you move. You because you're dealing with uh, families that are low income and, uh, you know, they, they go out and they could buy a big thing of apple juice right. for $1.99, okay. just dilute, dilute. Well, all of you have done a great public yes. service and you've also made it clear to us and reminded us that oral health may just sound like oral health, but it is, as I say, the mouth is... You know, the, the, the avenue to the rest of our body and the rest of our health. You've done an important public service. Thank you. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Delta Dental of New Jersey, Partners for Health Foundation, ADP, The Fidelco Group, Suez, Johnson & Johnson, and by Cone Resnick. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Hi, I'm Dennis Wilson, President and CEO of Delta Dental of New Jersey. You probably know that visiting your dentist and daily at-home care are necessary for maintaining good oral health. What you might not know is that your oral health is connected to your overall health. Oral health may impact conditions like diabetes, blood disorders, and heart disease. Regular cleanings and checkups allow your dentist to assess your risk and keep you and your smile healthy.